Today's top stories, February 8, 2021. Pork vendors in Metro Manila can now avail of 0% interest loan from the government. IATF issues guidelines on the wearing of face masks while inside vehicles. The Department of the Interior and Local Government issues warning against fakers of COVID-19 tests. And police arrest a political instructor of NPA in Surigao. Good day, I am Ram Dulfa. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. Our top story, Metro Manila pork vendors can now avail of zero interest loan from the government and with the implementation of price ceiling for meat products. The Department of Agriculture also offers loan program for commercial and backyard hog raisers nationwide. Yung mga gustong mag-repopulation, mas lalo na yung mga commercial hog raisers at ang backyard hog raisers ay may financing assistance na ibibigay po natin. Magpapautang din kami sa mga market vendors na miyembro ng asosasyon dito sa iba't ibang parte ng Metro Manila, pautang po zero interest at uh, para mayroon kayong kapital. Meanwhile, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque assures the government is working to ensure adequate supply of meat products in the Metro. Nabalitaan po natin na uh, may dalawang grupo na nagdeklara ng pork holiday. No? Yung sa parte po ng mga nagtitinda, eh sila daw po hindi magtitinda muna dahil uh, uh, napakababa daw ng price ceiling. At yung mga sa parte naman ng consumers, eh, meron po silang advocacy na kumain muna tayo ng alternative protein sources. Well, sinusuportahan po natin yung advocacy na alternative uh, pork sources, pero nakikiusap po kami sa ating mga nagtitinda Sana po ipagpatuloy ninyo ang pagtitinda ng baboy. Ano naman po ang ginagawa ng gobyerno? No? Gaya ng sinabi po natin nung nakaraang na linggo, mag-aangkat muna po tayo ng mga baboy galing sa Mindanao, sa Visayas at sa ibang parte ng Luzon na wala pong uh, ASF. Sa katunayan, nakipagkasundo na po tayo sa isang grupo ng, South, ng swine producers sa South Cotabato na magsusupply sila ng 10,000 heads of hogs kada linggo para po dito sa Metro Manila. Gobyerno na po ang mag-aangkat niyan at gobyerno na rin po ang magpapakalat niyan sa merkado. So hindi naman po tayo magkukulang. At ang uh, presyo po ng baboy na inaangkat natin sa South Cotabato ay nasa 145 per kilo. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque also clarifies the wearing of face mask while inside the vehicle. Roque mentions the guidelines approved by the Interagency Task Force and the Department of Health. Dahil nga po nagkaroon ng counting kaguluhan dun sa uh, ilang anunsyo na ginawa po ng ibang uh, opisyales, no, dilinawin ko po. Kapag ka po, ka, kayo po ay nagbabiyahin mag-isa sa sasakyan, po pwedeng tanggalin po ang face mask. Pero pag meron kayong kasama sa sasakyan, talagang required po na magsuot ng face mask kahit na sila ay um, mula po sa isang pamamahay. Malacanang says President Duterte prefers appointing former military men to his cabinet because they get the job done. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque in an interview mentioned several presidential appointees that seemed to please the president because of their accomplishments. Among them are Environment Secretary Roy Sematu and Presidential Peace Advisor and Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. Roque says General Sematu was able to clean Boracay on time while General Gavis keeps on going as vaccines are amid criticisms on vaccine procurement. Roque said these former military men have thinking that they need to follow rule orders instead of questioning them so they get things done. Last week, President Rodrigo Duterte offered retired AFP Chief of Staff General Gilbert Capay a post either in the Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System or MWSS or the Department of National Defense. Rocky, however, denied that there were more military men as compared to civilians in the Duterte cabinet. Malacanang assures all health frontliners in the country will be vaccinated in less than a month so that other sectors included in the expanded priority list can immediately follow. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the government has already completed its list of names of health frontliners to be inoculated with the vaccine. 
The COVID-19 vaccines arriving this month through the COVAX facility will only be 117,000 doses. It can only protect 58,500 people as they need to receive two doses to protect them from the virus. On Friday, the government released a new detailed priority list in its COVID-19 vaccination program, which now includes more sectors. Priority Group A includes frontline health workers, health professionals and non-professionals, senior citizens, persons with comorbidities, frontline personnel in essential sectors, including uniformed personnel and the indigent population. Meanwhile, Priority Group B includes teachers, social workers, other government workers, other essential workers, social demographic groups at significantly higher risk other than senior citizens, and indigenous people. It also include overseas Filipino workers and other remaining workforce. Meanwhile, the rest of the Filipino population are placed in priority group C. Malacanang believes Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong can be convinced to stay in his concurrent post as contact tracing czar. Presidential spokesperson Harry Rocky pointed out that the resignation of Magalong was not qualified as irrevocable because it was not stated in the letter. Rocky said it was only a matter of time before Magalong will be convinced to stay as head of the country's contract tracing efforts. He said he expects Magalong to make a decision whether to leave or keep his post in the next few days. Magalong earlier denied that his resignation is irrevocable, despite saying in previous interviews that it was. Magalong's resignation came after he was criticized over his attendance at the birthday party of celebrity Tim Yap at the Mayor Hotel in Baguio City. Health protocols were violated during the said event. The city government of Iligan is in full swing for the COVID-19 vaccination in their province. Details from Claire Gige. The LGU Iligan City through the City Health Office Emergency Operations Center or CHO EOC for COVID-19 pours its all efforts to fully prepare for the implementation of the Coronavirus Disease 19 or COVID-19 vaccination program in the city. Rollouts for various participants are already conducted to instill appropriate information with regards to the immunization program. During the said orientation, Dr. Belinda Lim of the CHO EOC reiterated that the vaccination plan implemented by the LGU is strictly in line with the national government's plan. Target groups or populations are identified to maintain the most critical essential services and directly reduce morbidity and mortality. The top five prioritized groups are frontline health workers, indigent senior citizens, remaining senior citizens, remaining indigent population, and uniformed personnel. Meanwhile, the LGU emphasized that the media plays a vital role in marketing the national government's immunization program. They are also tapped to help urging the public to decline vaccines not given by the government or from black markets because the authenticity of such is questionable. Added to this is instilling awareness among the citizens that vaccines are not instant solution to the pandemic and successful immunization does not grant 100% protection. Thus, health protocols and the beta solution must still be strictly followed. With this, media participants expressed their appreciation for the initiative of the CHO in reaching out and partnering with them. May ko nga, gihatagan ang higayon, ang, ang media gyud nga grupo for the orientation. Daghan mga gugayod mga, mga, mga facts, mga detalye nga. Dili lang nato makuha sa kanang basa-basa. So at least mag-guide sa, mag-guide sa, labi na kay Ang reporting, dili lang pang national, pang, pang local sad. So at least ang CHO, naingon ani nga initiative para sa mga listeners and readers sa, sa local Tante lang na equip ta as journalist, lamin na sa broadcast, equip ta sa knowledge, gimpart sa mga doctors. Kay ang atong buhian manggun nga kasayuran para sa mga tao should be scientifically based information. Dili ta gusto nga mabuhi on air nga wala basihan, lamin na sa science. No? We hope nga ang atong mga journalist we speak in the same language, the same information. Dili ta magmugna mugna o kanang mugawas bitaw sa rinda sa kamaturan.
For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigha of the Philippine Information Agency, Iligan City Information Center. As government prepares for the rollout of mass vaccination in the country, health and safety protocols must still be strictly implemented. This is to effectively contain the spread of COVID-19. But some people who are out in the public are still not keen on the proper wearing of face mask. What should be done on them? Let us find out the suggestions of our Kababayans here in our Voices ng Masa. Para sa akin, kailangan silang magpa-fine. I will ask them to have a fine so that ay kailangan kasi we have to be aware na it's a must to wear a mask and it must be seen every time. Hindi naman masyado lapitan mo siya mag-distansya ka ng dalawang metro at saka sabihan mo. Sabihan mo. Sabihan mo sa kanila. Ay dapat kung sa gobyerno bigyan rin ng parusa para sumunod. Ikulong. Wala, pain-pain lang ay wala yan. Ikulong dapat. Yung mga hindi po sumusunod sa mga hindi nagsusot ng face mask, ano, dapat po siguro makulong ng siguro isang linggo lang. Ganun lang. Ang kailangan nila sa protection ba sa health mask, ay sa pamilya nila, sa mga anak nila para hindi tayo magpapang virus ng sakit. Still to come, the Department of the Interior and Local Government issues warning against fakers of COVID-19 tests. And there will be no electric disconnection until next month. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Hanggat maaari, umiwas sa mataong lugar. Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig. Maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay. Takpan ang ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing. Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng coronavirus disease gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon. Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. You're still watching PNA Newsroom. Thank you for joining us. Fakers of reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR tests will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. The Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG issued the warning as it directed the Philippine National Police to ensure that all perpetrators are arrested and brought to justice. The DILG mentioned the Republic Act 11332 or the Mandatory Reporting of Notifiable Diseases and Health Events of Public Health Concern Act. Under the law, tampering of records relating to notifiable diseases or health events of public health concern which includes official medical test results or medical certificates is punishable by law. The law provides for penalties of 20,000 but not more than 50,000 pesos or imprisonment of not less than one month but not more than six months or both fine and imprisonment at the discretion of the court. Six Metro Manila residents were earlier barred from entering Boracay Island after presenting fake RT-PCR test certifications. Three of these individuals later on tested positive for COVID-19. The Health Department has sent about 70 sample specimens to the Philippine Genome Center 
for sequencing to confirm if the UK variant of SARS-CoV-2 is already infecting individuals in Cebu. UH7 chief pathologist Dr. Mary Jean Loreche says the samples were submitted following the continuing spike of COVID-19 and the detection of a UK variant in the two patients who are from Cebu. The first patient was an overseas Filipino worker from Dubai who hailed from Talisay City. The other person was from Liloan but submitted his specimen for the test in Santa Ana in Manila last January. Loreche said the DOH-7 is hoping the results of the 70 specimens submitted to PGC will be released within 10 days. She said more variants are expected to come due to the natural activity of the coronavirus. The PSA in Central Visayas has sought the support of local government units for the Step 2 registration for the Philippine Identification System or PhilC's National ID. In line with the celebration of the 31st Civil Registration Month in February, PSA 7 officially started the rollout of the Step 2 registration in Compostela Town, Northern Cebu. Step 2 registration is the validation of supporting documents and capture of biometrics. Registrants who completed the Step 1 registration are reminded to keep their transaction slips with the appointment schedules as they go to the registration centers to process Step 2. The PSA also partnered with various government agencies such as the Presidential Communications Operations Office or PCAO, Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT, and the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD to set up mobile registrations. The PSA's target is for all regions to be registered before the elections in May 2022. Hotels are asking the government to allow regulated meetings and some social events under General Community Quarantine or GCQ to help the industry survive amid the pandemic. The Hotel Sales and Marketing Association asked the Department of Tourism and the Tourism Congress of the Philippines to be allowed to accept mice or meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions. The HSMA said the concerned hotels vowed to comply with any proposed measures to ensure a safe experience for all stakeholders. The hotels also touted the respective stringent protocols with the goal of creating a safe and comfortable environment for meeting organizers, event planners and their attendees. As of December 2020, venues inside hotels and areas under GCQ and not being used as quarantine facilities may accept bookings for such gatherings with venue capacity capped at 30%. In business, the Department of Energy has issued an advisory to all distribution utilities regarding the extension of no disconnection policy for lifeline consumers. The advisory is pursuant to President Duterte's approval of the DOA's recommendation to continue the no disconnection policy for lifeline consumers. An example are the lifeline consumers of Meralco who are consuming below 100 kilowatt hours per month. The DOE said lifeline consumers comprise 32% of distribution utilities consumer base. However, they only account for 3% of the firm's electricity sales. The DOE advisory also asks all electricity consumers who are still unable to pay their bills to enter into socially equitable and manageable payment terms with the distribution utilities. Last week, President Duterte approved the recommendations of the DOE to give assistance to low-income consumers amid the pandemic. Up next, former rebels in Eastern Visayas took their oath of allegiance to the government and police arrested a political instructor of NPA in Surigao. The PNA Newser returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. 
isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Former three-term senator and deputy speaker Lauren Legarda has called for the protection of indigenous people's weaves and traditional cultural heritage. This following news reports of machine-woven blankets and garments using Cordillera weave patterns coming into the local market from abroad. Legarda said this influx has greatly affected small businesses in the Cordillera region. The deputy speaker emphasized the vulnerability of these rural livelihoods as well as the protection of their intellectual property from cultural appropriation. The former senator filed House Bill 7811, or an act safeguarding the traditional property rights of indigenous peoples. The bill aims to create a comprehensive cultural archive that will organize and provide an inventory of all cultural properties of the different ethno-linguistic groups of the Philippines. It also mandates the payment of royalties for the use of the cultural property of the IPs. Some 36 former members of the NPA took their oath of allegiance to the government in Eastern Visayas on Saturday. Philippine National Police Chief General Libod Sinas administered the simple ceremonies at the Police Regional Office 8, Camp Kangleon in Palo, Leyte. BRO 8 Regional Director Brigadier General Ronaldo De Jesus presented assorted high-powered firearms, ammunition and IED components surrendered by the rebel returnees. Sinas attributed the continued surrender of the NPA members to the trust and confidence they felt deeply for the government under President Rodrigo Duterte. Sinas assured all returnees of government assistance through the Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program. Among the surrenderers was a former member of a militant group who dropped from school and became a full-fledged NPA fighter. She confirmed the presence of other out-of-school NPA recruits in the Samar Leyte area. Police arrested a political instructor of the Communist New People's Army last Saturday in Sison Town, Surigao del Norte. The police regional office in Caraga identified the suspect as Jude Laray of the NPA's Sandatahang Unit Pam Propaganda, Kingdom of Guerrilla Front 4A. Laray is facing two counts of murder, attempted murder, and multiple attempted murder. PRO 13 Director Brigadier General Romeo Karamat Jr. said Laray was involved in the series of NPA harassments and armed attacks in Agusan del Norte in 2018. He commended operatives for bringing to justice fugitives from the law like Laray. In our foreign news, tens of thousands of demonstrators staged four separate rallies against the military coup in Myanmar on Sunday. The police in Yangon struggled to block the protesters who are marching to Sule Pagoda, the center of the city. Protesters marching on various city roads were avoiding any conflict with the police during the anti-coup demonstrations. Nearly 300 members of Myanmar's parliament issued a joint statement rejecting the military junta that seized power in a coup last week. Meanwhile, healthcare workers were at the forefront of the non-violent resistance with some on strike and others registering the protests while continuing to tend to patients since Wednesday. Myanmar's military declared a state of emergency last Monday after detaining the country's President Win Myint, State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi and other senior members of the ruling National League for Democracy Party. 
A magnitude 6.1 earthquake hit Magsaysay, Davao del Sur on Sunday, causing damage to infrastructure in regions 11 and 12. Vivo said the quake struck 5 kilometers southwest of Magsaysay town around noon. It was the second quake to have struck almost the same area on the same day. Magsaysay was hit hours earlier by a magnitude 4.8 quake. Five persons were reported injured in Cotabato. At least 30 structures were reported damaged in both regions. Seven landslides were also reported in Makilala and Emlang, Cotabato. Meanwhile, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake struck the waters off Davao Oriental at 8 this morning. In an updated VVOX bulletin, the earthquake's epicenter was found near Governor Generoso. It was felt at Intensity 2 in General Santos City, Alabel and Kiamba, Sarangani, and Intensity 1 in Coronadal City and South Cotabato. No damage or aftershocks were reported. In Tacloban City, classes and work in the government were suspended due to a low-pressure area that dumped heavy rains in their area. Eastern Visayas has been experiencing cloudy skies with moderate to at times heavy rainfall due to the weather disturbance. People living near mountain slopes and low-lying areas near river systems are advised to take precautionary measures as continuous rainfall may trigger landslides and flooding. Take one more look at today's biggest stories. Pork vendors in Metro Manila can now avail of 0% interest loan from the government. IATF issues guidelines on the wearing of face masks while inside vehicles. The Department of the Interior and Local Government issues warning against fakers of COVID-19 tests. And police arrest a political instructor of NPA in Surigao. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, check our webpage or check the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's the biggest stories that you need to know from PNA Newsroom. We tell you stories that inspire change. I am Rom Dufo. Have a good day.